What if the banks actually stand to profit from a higher gold or silver price? Well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcadia Economics on a beautiful Monday in Mexico. Hope you're all having a great day out there. And this is going to be a quick video, but uh, I want to thank everyone who watched last night's show where I addressed the question, could Basel III actually end the paper gold and silver scheme? Again, I wouldn't be audacious enough to say I know the exact answer, although at least from my days as an option trader, the way I was trained to approach these things was just look at the different possibilities, the probabilities. Something could be a 5% chance which is much different than a zero percent chance and certainly at uh, I don't know uh, at least something I've learned in this last uh, 15 years is that a lot of the things that people think can never happen mm, those absolutes can be a tricky one so again I don't really know exactly what will happen in two or three weeks but is it possible sure is it uh, favorite or a high probability I don't know if I would go that far but um, certainly I'm, I'm guessing we'll have things come into picture over the coming days and weeks yet as we'll let that develop just one thought I had because I was reading some of the comments from last night's videos and you know and understandably so saying a lot of folks mentioning, well, why would the banks ever allow this? And why would they give up their base of power? Well, again, brief version of what I mentioned in the video last night. A, whenever they do reach the point where they simply have no metal left, um, which the LBMA kind of told you they're pretty close to, there's that. Or these guys could be turning on each other. Uh, there's that. Again, we saw scenario A with running out of metal. That's what happened in the London gold pool. So these schemes last for as long as they do. They do have a shelf life. And I think we're getting close to that point, whether it's June or not. But here's one other scenario. What if the banks actually stand to profit from a higher gold or silver price? In fact, many people have asked the question, okay, well, can't the, man the market be manipulated higher? And absolutely it can. In fact, if you read uh, through some of the history of silver, especially uh, 1700s, 1800s, early 19th century, I mean, the government was always controlling the price of silver. They were buying silver, selling silver. FDR, a year after confiscating gold, I want to review the exact phrasing, but I believe he made it impossible to own silver as well or illegal. Let me check back on that. But there were silver precedents, so... Government's always, and, and when actually when you hear the stories behind it, you know, it's one politician thinks this is good. Then he finds out a couple of years later it wasn't. So, A, there is a precedent that price has been manipulated in both directions. And again, I just have thought more and more in these past couple months where if the banks can cash settle the COMEX contracts... You could actually make the case that if they're getting bailed out of their shorts there, let's say you set the price of silver to, you know, $10,000 and made gold a hundred or $200,000. If the banks cash settle the COMEX contracts and the governments and banks have any physical metal, which I'm assuming some of them do. I mean, it's not, you know, they don't exactly call and tell me what their exact positions are, but Essentially, it'd be a stealth form of default, a gold price, silver price reset, where the higher the number, let's say the government cash settles and the banks cash settle, and then they say the price of gold is a million dollars per ounce. Well, maybe if they only have a thousand ounces, well, all of a sudden you can make it a trillion dollars per ounce, wipe out all the debt, have a couple bucks left over. Again, I'm just hypothesizing here. I'm not saying that's they do not have inside information that that's what's happening. Although the more I've thought about that possibility, uh, again, something that I wouldn't rule out. Some of these guys have to know that this is eventually gonna end, whether it's June and because of Basel III or 
some other point in the future. Again, I don't know if I necessarily would say that JP Morgan has the billion ounces of silver that Ted Butler suggests, but some of these banks are probably long. And again, you've seen the historical precedent. Look what happened with long-term capital management. And some people feel the decision to allow Bear Stearns to fail in 2008 was payback for them not wanting to play ball in the bailout of long-term capital. Similar with Lehman, there was like, why did Lehman fail? You know, these bankers are not the nicest people, so they do turn on each other. And then perhaps the last uh, data point I'd throw in there, for those of you that have read uh, Creature from Jekyll Island, the great G. Edward Griffin book about the Federal Reserve, which goes into the history of these banks, and especially the Rothschilds who have a, a history for, you know, whether the market's going up or down, they don't care. And put another way, Yes, I certainly, it's my belief that the price of silver and gold are substantially lower than they would be in any sort of free market trading. Yet, if I put myself in the unenviable shoes of being a banker, as long as you know which directions it is going and you have a plan in place, you can still make a lot of money. And... I guess perhaps the last thing I'll add to this is that we're dealing with highly imperfect information. Unless Jamie Dimon's coming over to your dinner table and telling you exactly what he's doing. He hasn't told me. Ross Benham hasn't responded to me. So that's the nature of trading. If you knew everything perfectly, it'd already be priced in. That's why it's a science of probabilities. And that's just why I look at the different outcomes and Again, as I was looking through the comments today, noticing, understandably, that people think, why would the banks ever do this? But is it possible that the banks have know what's coming and have positioned themselves to be prepared for it? Yes, I think it's certainly possible, or as we used to say in option land, I wouldn't sell that put at zero. The put being downside protection, so hey, maybe I think there's a 1% chance or a 5% chance I don't know, I'm guessing the probability of the banks being positioned probably be higher than 1% or 5%. Whatever it is, is you know, it doesn't matter, in my opinion. Everyone can form their own. Um, but I just like to consider all possibilities. And then you let the data tell you, and in the end, if you own silver stocks or silver, some degree to which, whether it's June or a couple months later, or a year or two later, doesn't really matter, and my guess, based on everything I've studied in silver in my lifetime and all the conversations I've had, is that when this thing finally does move, I have a feeling we're all going to be sitting here saying, darn it, I wish silver had stayed lower so I could have bought more before it went. And, um, you know, again, I, I think that's where the mental part of all these things come in. Hey, there's some degree we can share truth, have an impact spreading the message. Then there's the part that we don't have control over and just being at peace with that and putting yourself in position so that you just allow nature and, and the natural forces of the market, which get delayed and distorted. But that's at least what I aim for, to let myself flow with the current. Hopefully this was helpful and uh, have a great day out there and I'll check in with you a little later.